Okay. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Development Service Department hearing for November 3rd, 2021. My name is Duke Fernandez. I'm the hearing officer with Development Services Department. Joining us remotely today is Deputy City Attorney Noah Brazier and Catherine Rahm representing Development Service Department Project Management Division is to my right. Uh, now Ms. Rahm with a procedural announcement. Thank you. Until further notice, hearing officer meetings will be conducted pursuant to the provisions of California Government Code Section 54953E as amended by Assembly Bill 361, which suspends certain requirements of the Ralph M. Brown Act during a proclaimed state of emergency when measures to promote social distancing are in effect or the city has determined meeting in person would present imminent risks to the health or safety of attendees. During the, state of, during the current state of emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic and in the interest of public health and safety, the hearing officer will be participating in hearing officer meetings via teleconference and or video conference. There will be no members of the public in attendance at the hearing officer meetings. In lieu of in-person attendance, members of the public may participate and provide comment via telephone, Zoom, using the hearing officer web form, email submission or via US mail of written materials to the hearing officer as noted on the webpage. The public may view the hearing officer meeting at the scheduled time and date on the City of San Diego's YouTube website, City of San Diego Public Hearings. Members of the public can offer public comment on non-agenda or an agenda item by accessing the meeting online using a desktop computer, laptop, tablet, or smartphone, or by calling into the meeting. When the hearing officer introduces the item you would like to comment on, raise your hand by either tapping the raise your hand button on your computer, tablet, or smartphone, or by dialing star nine on your phone. You'll be taken in the order in which you raise your hand. You may only speak once on a particular item. When the hearing officer indicates it is your turn to speak, click the unmute prompt that will appear on your computer, tablet, or smartphone, or dial star six on your phone. All right, thank you, Ms. Trump. Okay, this morning I'll be considering applications for development permits that the uh, San, Diego, San Diego Municipal Code identifies for resolution by a hearing officer in accordance with decision process three as referenced in section 112.0501 of the Land Development Code. The decisions made on projects today may be appealed to the Planning Commission. The appeals must be filed by the close of business within 10 working days from today's date. That means that the appeal must be filed by November 18th, 2021. The appeal must be filed on the proper forms located online of the Development Service Department website. Additionally, the certification of environmental documents may be appealed to the city council. That appeal must also be filed within 10 working days and also filed on the proper forms which are available from the city clerk's website. All of the approvals will become effective 10 working days from today's date. As, no, as long as no appeals are filed. However, no building permits may be obtained until the permits and resolutions are signed, notarized, and returned to Development Service Department for recordation with the county reporter. Prior to today's hearing, I've reviewed all staff reports, environmental documents, draft findings and conditions, and all written correspondence. I've also visited each site. Just a reminder to mute all mics until called upon to speak. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, public comment. Is there anyone that would like to speak on an issue within the jurisdiction of the hearing officer that is not related to one of the projects on today's topic? Raise your hand if you would like to speak. Seeing none, hearing none. Okay, moving on. Are there any requests for continuances or withdrawals? Yes, hearing officer Fernandez. Um, item one, there's been a, the applicant would like to withdraw the project from the docket. Okay, uh, project number 665412. Correct. Is there a reason? They need more time for a community planning group recommendation, I believe. Okay, so it'll be re-noticed. Correct. Okay. To be determined. All right, does anyone want to speak on the issue as of uh, on the issue of the withdrawal of this project? Please raise your hand. No one? Okay. All right, project 665412 is withdrawn. 
Now, let's see. There will be a consent agenda for projects with no speakers in opposition and no questions from the hearing officer. So we'll just go in order and see what we come up with. So item number two, project number 678857, the Scripps Mesa Apartments map waiver, tentative map waiver 2543896. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor or against this item? Please raise your hand. This is item number two, the Scripps Mesa Apartment map waiver. There's a hand. Julian Palacios. Ready? Yes, sir. Are you wanting to speak in favor or against? Uh, against. Against, okay. Hang on, let's see if we have any more speakers. Is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item? Favor or against? Okay, I don't see anybody Sarah, else. Sarah, hand, 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 hand up. I'm sorry. <laughs> raise your hand. You got a little hand button. Oh, oh, okay. On our screen. Old school. We got a little yellow hand on our screen, so <laughs> I really so getting used to all this technology. That's all right. That's all right. Identify yourself, please. Hi, right. my name is Eric Schreiner. Um, I'll be speaking for the applicant in favor of the project. Okay. All right. Do we have the project manager? Oscar. He's here. Oh, okay, great. All right. So we're gonna, we're gonna not we're gonna skip item number two for the consent agenda. Uh, item number three, project six 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 eight six, the Etiwanda map waiver, postal development permit two four three nine seven zero four, and map waiver two four three seven six zero seven. Is there anyone that wishes to speak on this item in favor or against? I think Julian needs to put his hand up. Julian, you only want to speak on the one item, right? That's correct. Sorry, okay. I didn't know I needed yeah. a row on button. Yeah. The, there yeah. you go. That's okay. Thank you. So we have Adam Cavallos. Yes. yes. Are you wishing to speak in favor or against? In favor. Okay, we'll get back to you. How about uh, Denise Larson? Yeah, yes. <laughs> in favor or against? In favor. Okay. All right, so nobody against this one, right? Do we have any other speakers? Panelists, sir. We have the applicant, Mr. Fernandez, both David Perrin and Maggie Rowland have their hands up. They are both in favor. Uh, do they want to speak or do they just, are they here just for questions? They're here for questions. Okay. Do I have anybody opposed to this project that wants to speak? I don't think we do, do we? No? You don't Nobody have to opposed? Up or down. Okay, moving forward then. Ms. Blake, is there any reason that this item cannot be placed on the consent agenda? No, there is not. Okay. All right, pursuant to section 15305 of the California Environmental Quality Act, the project is exempt from environmental review and I do recognize that exemption. The project is not pending an appeal of the environmental determination. That determination was made on September 15, 2021 and the opportunity to appeal that determination ended September 29, 2021. I can make the findings necessary to approve project 666686, CDP 2439704 and map waiver 2437607, seven, including a waiver of the requirement to underground existing overhead utilities. This is subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. This decision is final unless appeal to the planning commission. Thank you. Thank you. Done, right? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, moving on. Item number four. Project number 690801, the Chelsea Flats tentative map waiver, tentative map waiver 2552081. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor or against this project? 
please raise your hand. Loren? Delon? Did I get that right? I'm yes. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, so I'd like to talk about the procedure and understand, you know, why we gained that notice so late. Okay. I'm a neighbor. I'm right All next. Right. To the just hold your comments. We'll get back to you. Okay. Sure. I'm just trying to go through the consent agenda. So. Uh, and I believe that would conclude the consent agenda. All right. So let's back up a little bit. No, Bancroft. No, that's not the consent, right? We have lots of options. All right. So back to item number two. Project 678857, the Scripps Mesa apartment map waiver. Tentative map waiver 2543896. The city's project manager is Oscar Galvez. Mr. Galvez, could you please provide a staff report? Yes. Please state your name for the record, too. Can you see the intro slide? I can. Okay. Good morning. My name is Oscar Galvez, Development Project Manager with the City of San Diego's Development Services Department. The second item on today's agenda is for project number 678857, Scripps Mesa Apartments Map Waiver. Okay. This project is located on a 6.69 acre site located at 10380 Spring Canyon Road. The project site is in the CV1-1 base zone and within the Miramar Ranch North community plan area. The CV1 Dash one zone is intended to accommodate visitors, visitor serving and resident, residential uses. The site is, is within an urban developed commercial neighborhood surrounded by a park, commercial and single and multifamily development on all sides. The site is currently under construction and was a school owned by a San Diego Unified School District. This aerial photo shows the project site which will be demolished, which is currently being demolished, which is east of Spring Canyon Road and south of Scripps Poway Parkway. This is a photo of Spring Canyon Road and Scripps Poway Parkway at the northwest corner of the project site. This is a photo of Spring Canyon Road and North Brookville Drive at the west side of the project site. And lastly, this is a photo of Cripps Park Poway Parkway at the northeast corner of the project site. The proposed project will subdivide the previously approved Scripps Mesa Joint Use Project through a tentative map waiver to create eight commercial condominium units on a previously mapped single parcel. The eight commercial units are summarized in this slide and consist of three units, which will have 212 market rate apartments, 52 affordable apartments, an additional two units with up to 2,000 square feet for retail use, apartment amenities, up to 4,000 square feet for institutional uses, and lastly, one unit of a parking structure. Tentative map waiver number 2543896 is being proposed to create eight commercial condominium units. On June 19th, 2018, the Board of Education for the San Diego Unified School District certified the Scripps Mesa Joint Occupancy Project Final EIR. On September 14th, 2021, the Development Services Department completed CEQA Section 15160 Consistency Evaluation for the proposed project. DST determined that the proposed project for a map waiver to split eight condo unit developments already under construction is consistent with the EIR certified for the, by the Board of Education. 
and would not result in new impacts. On September 7th, 2021, the Miramar Ranch North Planning Committee voted 360 to deny approval of the proposed project and provided in part the following comments. Since the beginning of this project, MRNPC has requested the applicant to request public input and workshops. We asked the developer to consider mitigating for its proposed significant impacts to public facilities. Staff recommends that the hearing op officer adopt the findings and mitigation monitoring and reporting program pursuant, pursuant to CEQA and approving actions related to the 10 minute map waiver number 2543896 and also approve tentative map waiver number 2543896. This recommendation includes a document submitted to the hearing officer on November 2nd, 2021, which includes several corrections. City staff and the applicant are available if you have any questions. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Galvez. So just to be clear, you, you gave us a memo with some corrections. Those corrections were incorporated into your report that you just gave. That is correct. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. I'm gonna open this up for public comment. Uh, we'll take the speakers in favor first. Do I have speakers in favor on this project that wish to speak? Raise your hand, I see Sarah. Sarah Eric, Eric Schreiner. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay, gotcha. <laughs> All right, uh, you're up. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Eric Schreiner. I am the general counsel for Monarch Group, the developer of Script Mesa Apartments. With me this morning are Sarah Kruger Jager, a principal with Monarch, and Marco Gonzalez, legal counsel. As you heard from staff, we are in the process of developing a 264 unit mixed use apartment complex. 20% 53 of the units of which are deed restricted as affordable to very low income households, making less than 50% of the area median income. As an example, rents for an affordable one bedroom unit will be restricted to 1,136, including utilities using the Housing Commission's 2021 rent table. City of San Diego issued billing permits and approved construction of the project over a year ago in July, 2020, and construction started that same month. Construction is about halfway completed, and we anticipate construction will be completed around December 2022. Before you this morning is our map waiver application. We have applied to the city for a map waiver to authorize creation of a maximum of eight condominium units. The map waiver only addresses whether the project can create a maximum of eight condominium units. As has been noted in the documents accompanying the staff report, because an EIR was already certified for the project by the San Diego Unified School District Board of Education and circumstances have not changed since that was completed, there is no further CEQA review required. We applied for the MAP waiver because we are required to do so to use the low income housing tax credits the project has been awarded in exchange for providing 53 apartments affordable to very low income households and in order to separate ownership of the commercial and on-site school building. And just to be clear, all of the residential units in this development are going to be rental apartments. We are not creating individual residential condominium units for sale. We ask that you approve our MAP waiver application and our team is available to answer any questions you may have and if time is available, we will request a time to um, rebut any opposition um, to the project. Thank All you. All right, thank you. Okay, any other speakers in favor that wish to speak? I have a, is Lauren the one, the one against? I'm here. Okay, I think that's all the ones. Uh, Mr. Duan, you were against the project, right? Not this one. Okay. 
Is it a different one? Yeah. Do you wish to speak on this project? Nope. nope. Oh, you can uh, unraise your hand, please. There we go. Well, you can remove your, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Okay, any other speakers in favor? I'm not seeing anybody. Please raise your hand. Still not seeing anyone. Okay. Let's go into the opposition. We have a speaker that wanted to speak against this project. Yeah, that's me, Julian. I raised my hand. Okay, Julian, please uh, state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Julian Palacios. Okay. So I am a, I have a, I am a neighbor of the project that lives in Winchime, uh, right across Scripps, uh, uh, sorry, Spring Canyon Road. Uh, I live in the homes that are closest to the project. I drive, ride my bike and walk by the project site uh, on a daily basis, multiple times. Um, I am uh, aware of the project for the last few years and was very involved in the, you know, community uh, engagement that was uh, uh, prepared by the Miramar Ranch North Planning Committee and other community groups in Scripps Ranch. Uh, there is a very, very general opposition to the project from neighbors that are directly impacted by it. Uh, there were, we are aware that the San Diego Unified School District being the lead agency and one of the two main stakeholders in the project, you know, one of the other one being Monarch, um, you know, we're the lead agency throughout the environmental impact report preparation. Uh, the com I do not feel that they provided meaningful community engagement during the environmental impact report preparation and the, even the draft, the uh, addressing of comments by agencies and the public. Uh, I'll provide, uh, you know, I, to me, their uh, review and determination of the impacts was very subjective in some of the categories. You know, there's multiple categories that the project is looked at from the environmental perspective. You know, aesthetic impacts is one example. Um, there is no structure within view of the project that is more than two stories high. And here uh, comes... Uh, a pretty significant uh, number of building structures that are four stories high and even a parking structure. Um, the determination of uh, aesthetic impacts, for example, regarding the building height was compared to the height of hills surrounding the project. So to me, that's very subjective. You're comparing the height of a hill that has you know, residential properties built on top to the height of a building structure. To me, that is a completely subjective determination from the lead agency and one of the stakeholders in the project. I don't think that's adequate. Uh, they received hundreds of letters from the community on just this particular item. There are other items that were very uh, clear as a resident of the community that, you know, uh, for example, traffic impacts. Um, we all know that Chris Park Parkway has a lot of traffic already. This is a very significant addition of residences to a very small area and connecting to the I-15 to the west. Uh, Caltrans provided comments, you know, with significant um, uh, disagreement with the information provided in the AAR. There was one response provided and that was it. Um, basically, for example, for traffic impacts, they're comparing uh, peak uh, trips caused by the existing school that was demolished, which was already demolished. I think the project manager from the city mentioned that it was in the process of being demolished. It's, it's been demolished for a while. Yeah, 15 um, seconds left, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, the Miramar Ranch North Planning Com Committee voted to deny approval, like presented by the project manager. I also submitted comments on a web form with some photos that are actual current photos from two days ago, not what was presented in the presentation by the project manager. The renderings presented in the AR do not match what's being constructed. The parking structure is being uh, established as a four story. It is actually five stories. I provided pictures of that. Uh, it has a fifth room and- Oscar, I mean, uh... Mr. Delon Palacios, 
Yes. Julian. Your time is up, unfortunately, and I, I hate to cut you short like that. I would normally let you finish your thoughts since we don't have a lot of speakers, but uh, unfortunately, we, we are here just for the creation of the, the condominium units, the, the division of, of, of this um, parcel, if you will. We're not here to rehash the items that went through the Unified School District. They had their public hearing, they certified it, they adopted their mitigation monitoring. Um, so I, I understand you're, you're against these things. You, you feel like there's some inaccuracies, but that's not why we're here today. We are here just for a creation of a condominium uh, mapping to, you know, for separate ownership. So right. I, I, I cannot I, get back into any of those issues. No, I, I just want to say one more thing. And I, I was trying to, I didn't know I had a time limit. I'm sorry, but I want to say one more thing. Uh, the tenant map that's being presented doesn't really match what was presented in the EIR. And that was one of the main reasons. How can a tenant map be approved or a waiver if it doesn't match what's presented in the EIR? So that was my final comment. And I was kind of providing some background. So sorry okay. for that. That's okay. Thank you. All right. I believe that's all the speakers I had, right? So let me just. Okay. Staff. We're not going to get into all the other issues that, uh, that Julian brought up, but if you could make a comment on the on the discrepancy between a tentative map and what he's suggesting, there's a discrepancy. I'm not saying there is one, uh, but he, he brings up the, there is a, a difference between what's being proposed and what it was approved by the Unified School District. Is there something you can comment on that? Yes, I'd like to ask the map check reviewer to please comment, please. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. And you're awful muffled, so I can't understand what you're saying. So maybe your distance to the mic should be on camera as well. See there? We have them. Are you getting on? Does it have a camera? Do you have the ability to get on screen? Yes. There we go. Good morning, here, Officer Fernandez. Everybody, how are you doing? Map check. Good morning. Um, the question was uh, whether or not what's being proposed matches the EIR. And I know that's a pretty general, broad statement, but that's what I gathered from the. Um, opposition uh like you said it is a very general statement um the exhibit that i've seen has not changed through the review process okay so in your opinion everything is consistent in my opinion from what i've seen yes okay all right All right, you know, this is a, I realized that the speaker was a little frustrated with the process, uh, wanted more input, feels like there's some inconsistencies, but uh, staff is saying that uh, it is consistent. Um, so I'm gonna have to go with the evidence of my plans and the testimony of staff. I can make the findings necessary to approve this project uh, on June 19th, 2018, 
San Diego Unified School District Certified Final in Environmental Impact Report, number 201701108, and adopted the Mitigation Monitoring and Reporting Program as lead agency for the Scripps Mesa Joint Occupancy Project. The FEIR has been prepared in accordance with the California Environmental Quality Act, and the document reflects the independent judgment of the San Diego Unified School District as lead agency. Uh, the city conducted a consistency evaluation, which speaks to uh, your comment. Um, that was completed. The evaluation con concluded that the environmental impacts of the project were adequate, adequately addressed in the um, environmental document. Therefore, no further environmental document is required under CEQA. So that being said, I can make the findings necessary to approve project 678-857, tentative map waiver 2543896, subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. Uh, this decision is final unless appealed to the planning commission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Thank you. Okay. All right, item number four, project number 690801, the Chalcedony Flats tentative map waiver, tentative map waiver 2552081. The city's project manager is Ben Haffertappi. Mr. Haffertappi, could you please provide the staff report? Yes. Good morning, members of the public. The fourth item on today's agenda is for project number 690801, Chalcedony Flats tentative map waiver. If you'd like to call in and speak on this project, please follow the instructions as displayed. Please mute yourself until you're called upon. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Fernandez. I'm Ben Hafertepe, Development Project Manager. And the project before you today is the Chalcedony Flats Tentative Map Waiver Project. The Chalcedony Flats Tentative Map Waiver Project is located on an existing 0 0.14 acre site at 1902 through 1908 Chalcedony Street. The project site is in the RM-1-1 zone with the majority of the project site being in the RM-2-5 zone within the Pacific Beach Community Plan Area. The lot is bordered on the north and east by residential development, Lamont Street to the east and Chalcedony Street to the south. The project site and surrounding properties to the north, south, east and west are designated residential medium density of 15 to 30 dwelling units per acre in the community plan. The property to the north has the same zoning designation of RM-1-1 with the majority of the property being in the RM-2-5 zone. Properties to the west and south are in the RM-2-5 zone as well. However, the properties to the east are in the RM-1-1 zone. The project site currently contains two three-story duplexes with each duplex containing an attached one-car garage for each unit. They are currently under construction pursuant to combination building permits numbers 242-4719 and 242-4723, which are tied to project number 663-992. The permits for these duplexes were issued on December 7th, 2020. During the ministerial review process, the project was determined to be in compliance with the underlying RM-2-5 zone regulations, including but not limited to height, floor area ratio, parking setbacks, and landscaping requirements. At the time of the issuance of the ministerial permits, the applicant paid the inclusionary affordable housing in lieu fee and paid the applicable development impact fees for financing public facilities. I'm just gonna go ahead and show a few photos of the project site. This is a photo of the two duplex buildings under construction north on Chalcedony Street. Here's another angle of the two duplex buildings from Chalcedony Street looking north. 
This photo was taken at the Lamont Street and Chalcedony Street intersection looking northeast. And this photo was taken on Lamont Street looking east. The action before you today is a, a request for a tentative map waiver pursuant to San Diego Municipal Code Section 125.0120B1 in order to create four residential condominium units on a single parcel that was previously mapped. The project does not propose any enlargements or expansion of use, nor does it request any deviations. The tentative map waiver would allow the creation of four residential condominium units for ownership opportunities and does not affect the previous ministerial approvals in any way. On July 14th, 2021, the Pacific Beach Planning Group voted 11 0 to 1 to recommend approval of the proposed project without conditions. The project was determined to be categorically exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act pursuant to CEQA Section 15301 existing facilities. The environmental exemption determination for this project was made on October 1st, and the opportunity to end to then the opportunity to appeal that determination ended on October 15, 2021. Project is consistent with the Pacific Beach Community Plan land use designation of residential medium density of 15 to 30 dwelling units per acre or two to four dwelling units allowed on the project site. The project complies with the subdivision regulations and development standards required by the underlying RM-2-5 zone, including height, density, building setbacks, and floor ratio and lot coverage. In addition, this project is not requesting any deviations or variances from the applicable regulations. City staff has reviewed the proposed subdivision and all issues identified through the review process have been resolved in conformance with the adopted city council policies and regulations of the land development code. City staff determined that the proposed subdivision conforms to both the Pacific Beach community plan and general plan. Draft findings and tentative map waiver conditions are contained in their staff report to support approval of the project. Therefore, staff recommends that the hearing officer approve tentative map waiver 2552081. Lastly, I also wanted to read into the record that the environmental exemption attachment in the staff report under attachment six is incorrect. I've sent the memo to the hearing officer and attached the correct notice of exemption that will be filed with the county reporter should the project be approved. This concludes staff presentation. Staff, myself, and the applicant are available to answer any questions. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, let's open this up for public comment. I believe, well, let's just, let's go for the speakers in favor. Anyone that would like to speak in favor of this project, raise your hand. There is one, Maggie Rowland. I'm here basically representing the Termillion Builders. So I'm here for questions. You represent the builder? Correct. So you're just, uh, you're just here for questions? Yes, okay. sir. All right, thank you. Okay, any other speakers in favor? Please raise your hand. Anyone else? I'm not seeing anybody, are we missing anybody? Anybody being overlooked? Okay. All right, let's move on to the opposition. Mr. DeLong, I see your hand. Now is yes. your time. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Fernandez, for the opportunity to speak. So I'm uh, the neighbor, as Ben mentioned, to the north with the same uh, zoning. So I understand exactly what the law allows. I'm here to understand why we are getting that notice so late in the process, uh, October 10th, October 20th. I spoke with Mr. Ben. Uh, the product project manager on the 22nd on Friday. I learned something today that I didn't hear from, from, from Ben is that in uh, July 14th, apparently the PB planning group 
voted 11 to one, right, to accept that process. So as a neighbor, it looks like two million comes in, buys a property, subdivides, maximum profit and gets out, right? So understand, right? I mean, that's their rights, but we have no voice, apparently no uh, opportunity to, to, to provide our input. Uh, those units will bring two to three cars, you know, each. Uh, parking is already difficult. And uh, those puny comical garages, you know, one car garages uh, with maybe in theory, you can park cars, but in practice, you can't, you know, you, if you look at the units, you can't do that. So I'd like to understand what the process is, you know, with the city, you know, to be more engaged and to make sure at least going forward that, you know, residents in Pacific Beach have been, you know, resident for 21 years. How do we avoid that? Tourmalin from the get-go has not provided any information East of Ingram means that it's not the Coastal Commission. Apparently, I'm gonna to need to talk again with Carl Rand at the PV Planning Group to understand how do we give our inputs? This is not in the spirit of uh, this block. I understand the zoning. I have a property with the same zoning. So I'd like to understand you know, what, what can be done going forward and uh, will we have you know, four owners, I mean, what will, what, what will happen going forward, you know, with the noise, with the traffic, you know, all of that uh, happening. So I'm not in, in favor, but I understand that may, may just be, you know, a mute point. I just wanted to make that point. And I represent a lot of my neighbors that some of them couldn't make it here. And some others are, are, are resignated to, you know, to accept, you know, this, uh, this uh, new project. There is no Low income, uh, uh, did we talk about low income? These properties are from 1.25 to 1.35 million. So I'm not understanding, you know, if, if that type of project will continue going forward in Pacific Beach and if Tourmaline will keep, you know, raiding that, that neighborhood, taking the profit and, and, and going to the next project. That's it. All right, All right. thank you. So any answer from Tourmaline, from Miss Roland, it's, when I read her profile, it please, talks about please, expedited sir. and entitlement and permit process. Mr. Delon, Mr. Delon, don't please don't address somebody else here. Your questions are to me only. So I I understand that you have concerns with the process of the noticing. So that's what I got from yours. You wanted to be able to provide input, and you're concerned with no low income housing. These are what I received from your three minutes. So. Please don't address anybody else, all right? I will get back to you if I have any further questions. For now, uh, you can unraise your hand. Uh, your, your three minutes are up, thank you, sir. Do we have any other speakers that are opposed to this project? Any other speakers, please raise your hand. Seeing none, give, give you guys a second, just in case. All right, I'm seeing no other speakers. So I'm gonna close public comment and we can address some of these things with staff. So first off, the noticing. Uh, it's been suggested that the noticing was late and not following the protocol. Can anybody in staff speak of that? And whether or not we followed the uh, protocol for noticing and it was uh, legal. Mr. Haffertappi, please. I can speak on behalf of the noticing. So when the, the project was first initially submitted, uh, city staff are required to go ahead and process notice of applications to all property owners and occupants within 300 feet of the project site. Um, Further along down the review process, once all issues are cleared, and I was able to prepare this project for a public hearing, I had noticed that the public notices for a notice of applications haven't gone out. Uh, I caught this in uh, late September as I was preparing this project for hearing. Uh, I brought it attention to staff and we went ahead and processed notice of applications in late September followed by notice of public hearings in mid-October. So we met all noticing requirements? I believe so, yes. And uh, I, would, I would defer to the city attorney uh, to, 
to possibly provide any comment on that. Um, support and summary on the noticing requirements. The reason I ha hesitate, Mr. Hafatapi, is uh, you didn't sound sure when you say, I believe so. I'm, I'm looking for either it was noticed properly or it wasn't. It was noticed properly, yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. I believe that um, we just have two other issues. It's unfortunate that uh, the speaker was not uh, you know, allowed to provide some input. I think that you have to follow the noticing and you know, in the future a little tighter so you can make sure that you have your moment, your voice. I can't really speak to why you feel like you got it late or you didn't have your opportunity to to provide input, um, but here we are. We're, this is just a map waiver. There's no input on the on the construction of this. These things are already pretty much built. Uh, as far as the low income, that's not a requirement. Uh, you, there are certain advantages to building low income. Uh, there are some incentives and cost advantages, but uh, you're not required to. You can build market rate and you just uh, go through that process. It costs a little more and uh, there's some fees involved, but uh, that is what the developer chose to do. And as far as buying, developing and selling, that's how some people make their living. So there's nothing illegal or wrong with that. Um, it's met the parking, it's met all the requirements uh, city staff is presenting. So um, he's based on the evidence and the testimony, I can make the findings necessary to approve this project. Uh, pursuant, to one, pursuant to section 15301 of the California Environmental Quality Act, the project is in, exempt from environmental review and I do uh, recognize that exemption. Uh, it's not pending an appeal of the environmental determination as stated before by Mr. Hafatapi. Uh, that determination was made on October 1st, 2021, and the opportunity to appeal that determination ended October 15th, 2021. I can make the findings uh, necessary to approve Project 690801, tentative map waiver 2552081, subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. The decision is final unless appeal to the planning commission. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Okay. Last item. Project number, this will be item number five, project number 458558, the Bancroft Street Residence. Uh, variance 1647238. The city's project manager is Carrie Lindsay. Ms. Lindsay, could you please provide a staff report? Sure, thank you. Um, before I begin, I'd like to read in one correction for the record, <clears throat> excuse Please. me, which was also sent in a memo yesterday. Okay. Um, this is on attachment five, uh, page two, the first permit condition uh, should uh, include a utilization date of November 18th versus the 17th. So that will be corrected in the final document. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, one moment while I share my screen. <laughs> okay. All right. Good morning, hearing officer and members of the public. My name is Carrie Lindsay. I am the development project manager for the Bancroft Street Residences, uh, project 458558. 
For those of you wishing to call in to speak on this project, the phone and testimony period is now open. Uh, please take a moment to view the instructions displayed on how to call in, and please mute yourself until called upon. And I'll leave this up for just a moment. Okay. Uh, the project before you today is the Bancroft Street Residences, project number 458558. The project requests a variance to allow construction of two new single family dwelling units onto uh, contigu contiguous vacant lots, each with a maximum floor area ratio of 0 0.70, where the limit is 0.45. Okay, the 0.11 acre project site is located on two vacant lots, numbers 15 and 16, located just north of 1332 Bancroft Street on the west side of Bancroft Street, uh, shown here. Um, this is on the south side of Ash Street and more gener generally located northwest of where Interstate 15 and California State Route 94 intersect and is within the greater Golden Hill Community Plan area. The vacant lots sit just north of four existing single dwelling units along the same street. The neighborhood is in an urbanized community developed with existing residential units and the 32nd Street Canyon runs behind and to the west of the lots here. The site is within the RS11 residential single unit zone of the Greater Golden Hill Community Plan area. The community plan designates the site very low residential with a zero to nine dwelling units per acre. To the west of the project site is the 32nd Street Canyon, again, shown here in green, which is also zoned RS11 and designated open space. To the east and more generally, uh, defining the area surrounding the canyon, the properties are zoned RS17 and also designated low residential. You can see here uh, RS17 is shown in yellow. Okay, per the Sinigo Municipal Code, Section 1260802, a variance may be requested for proposed development that would not comply with an applicable development regulation of the Land Development Code, uh, except that density shall not be increased through variance. Uh, variance provides relief from strict application of development regulations due to special circumstances that deprive the property of privileges enjoyed by other nearby properties. In this case, the project requests a variance to allow floor area ratio of 0 0.70 in the RS11 zone, where 0 0.45 is otherwise required. The floor area ratio limits the floor area of a building to a certain portion of the lot size. The project site is zoned RS11, which per the residential base zone regulations has the maximum floor area ratio of 0.45, which we see here. This means that a building in the RS11 zone can have no more than 45% of the lot area as a building floor area. This is unlike other RS zones where the maximum floor area ratio varies depending on the lot size. Again, you can see here in the table. In the RS11 zone shown here in the lighter shade in the middle, covers an irregularly shaped area which follows the contours of the 32nd Street Canyon. This is similar to the designated open space from the community plan that we were looking at before and also down here in the bottom corner. The required lot size for the RS11 zone is 40,000 square feet or 0 0.92 acres. The development standards for RS11 zone are based on the required lot area, which means that the allowable gross floor area of a house on a 40,000 square foot lot at 0 0.045 FAR is 18,000 square feet. Uh, this is far in excess of the size of a typical single family home. However, RS11 zoned lots in this vicinity uh, occur only in the canyon and they do not attain this lot size, particularly for privately owned lots along the edge of the canyon. Uh, and as, just, as the lot size decreases in the RS11 zone, so does the size of the buildings that are allowed on each lot. 
The project contains two lots that are only 2,500 square feet at a 0 0.045 FAR. A 2,500 square foot lot is only allowed 1,125 square feet of building area. This limits the two lots uh, smaller two smaller homes, which deprives them of the privilege of developing reasonably sized single family homes on either lot in line with the typical RS11 zoned lots. With the variance proposed here, uh, the house, one house would total 1,702 square feet and house two would total 1,714 square feet. Zoning for nearby lots located outside of the canyon area, and again in yellow, is predominantly RS17, which has a 5,000 square foot minimum lot size. And uh, there is a small area of RS14 seen here, uh, which is a 10,000 square foot minimum lot size. With the exception of the canyon itself, the neighborhood is developed with standard single family residences, which have a variable FAR of up to 0 0.70, depending on their lot size. So although the project site is zoned RS11, it more closely matches the lot configurations and general development pattern in the RS17 zoning, like the surrounding area. Okay, the project was analyzed per the California Environmental Quality Act Section 15183, and the project was found to be consistent with the underlining zoning and with the final program environmental impact report for the North Park and Golden Hill Community Plan updates. So this is under project. 0611, which was certified by City Council on November 7th, 2016. Project related impacts have been reviewed in relation to the mitigation monitoring and reporting program for the program environmental impact report. Uh, there are no significant environmental effects and the project does not require mitigation. This project has been to the Greater uh, Golden Hill Community Planning Group twice. The first time was on February 11th, 2019, where the group voted nine to three with one abstention to approve the project with conditions. The project returned to the planning committee on July 8th, 2020, and was approved eight to zero with one abstention and with new conditions added. Okay, between the two votes, between the two CPG votes, the following conditions were recommended. Okay. That any biological and related environmental issues be addressed by requirements from city staff. That the city evaluates an offsite retaining wall to make sure it's safe for vehicles. That a revision of an EMRA with existing property owners listed here on the slide and the city uh, to no longer include portions of the street and retaining wall uh, fronting the parcels listed that the city repair any damage caused to roadway and retaining wall by recent city public works projects, and that this, the maintenance and repair of the street and retaining wall from the listed parcels on the slide become the responsibility of the city after any improvements the city requires of the Bancroft Street residences. So in response to that, the staff has reviewed and accepted the submitted general biological assessment report that was updated April 2021, which identified tier four vegetation, which is not considered sensitive vegetation. The proposed project is expected to impact approximately 0 0.10 acres of disturbed non-native dominant vegetation habitat and 0 0.03 acres of disturbed habitat. Therefore, no mitigation is required. Additionally, a slope analysis, which indicated that the project does not contain steep hillsides, was reviewed. So based on staff analysis, the project does not include environmentally sensitive lands in the form of sensitive biological resources or steep hillsides, and therefore does not require a site development permit and no mitigation is required. The conditions two through five, they have no nexus to the project. The applicant is not liable for current or city, uh, future city maintenance responsibilities on Bancroft Street or for existing agreements with the city uh, that the city may have with other property owners. Okay. So in conclusion, the RS11 zoning standards being applied to the project site small lots in a neighborhood that is owned almost exclusively RS17 is a special circumstance particular to the premise and does not apply generally to the lots in the neighborhood. So therefore staff recommends approval of the variance allowing a maximum floor area ratio of 0 0.70 where the limit is 0.45. Okay. Uh, draft permit and conditions and draft findings have been presented along with the staff report and staff re recommends approval of the variance. So staff and myself and the owner uh, and his team are available for questions.
Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Let's open uh, let's open this up for public uh, testimony. I did, I just for the record, I did receive several emails. Um, I count at least four different individuals that were voicing and that wish to speak. I believe they want to speak. Uh, we'll give them a chance. If they don't speak, then I'll just kind of read their email into the record. And if there's anybody in addition to these four, uh, please speak up. So just before we get into this, I want to make sure that uh, we touch on any speakers in favor first. Speakers in favor of the project, raise your hand. So if you're opposed to it, unraise your hand. We're just going to take the speakers in favor of this project first. Are we there? Mark Silvia. Yes, sir. Mark Silva. Silva, sorry. It's far away. I can barely see it. Uh, Mark Silva, are you and, in favor and, of the project? Yes, I'm here as the architect uh, in favor of the project and here to answer any questions. So you don't want to speak unless we have questions? Correct. All right. Thank you, Mr. Silva. Uh, John Ryan is also here. Uh, who is John Ryan? Uh, the owner of the property. Okay. Thank you. Available for questions, or did you want to uh, speak? Uh, basically, I may do both. Well, now is your time to speak. If you want to speak, sure. Introduce yourself, and yeah. you have three minutes. Sure. Uh, good morning, Mr. Fernandez. Um, my name is John Ryan, and I'm the owner of the two subject properties known as the Bancroft Street Residences. Um, there's uh, eight points that I would like to. Uh, read <laughs> that basically address the comments that uh, you received uh, last night regarding our property, our, our project. Uh, first, uh, as Carrie said, uh, the project was approved twice by the Golden Hill Planning Group. Um, incidentally, at that Golden Hill uh, Planning, uh, Golden Hill Community Group meeting, I should say, uh, Mark in, that uh, Mark and I attended, there was never any mentioned about a group called the 32nd Street Task Force. Uh, we have never been invited to join the group or attend any of their meetings. Uh, point two, uh, the steep slope, again, what uh, Carrie mentioned, uh, that has been addressed by my civil engineer in his reports and plan sheets and has been reviewed by city staff. Uh, the what do you call pictures? Pictures were sent of people using a level uh, to determine steep slope. And I don't think that's the way the city determines um, steep slope. Uh, point number three, uh, the eroded cavity shown in two of the photos uh, in the neighbor's presentation, um, that is not my property. And in fact, it's over 80 feet away from my property. Um, my neighbor to the north, Mark, owns the property that abuts uh, this land where the cavity exists. Um, and that erosion has been there for over 70 years. He used to play in that crevice uh, when he was a kid. Um, that land where the crevice is owned, uh, Mark said, is owned by the city. So Regarding the crevice, if people are concerned about it, they may want to contact the city about it. Uh, point number four, uh, reference was made uh, by the um, 32nd Street Task Force that there is a waterway in the 32nd Street Canyon. Um, there is no uh, waterway there. Uh, there's a natural path that carries uh, stormwater down the canyon when it rains, uh, just like you find in many of the canyons in San Diego. Um, so I kind of wanted to address that. Num uh, point number five, uh, regarding the environmental impact on the area, as um, Carrie has stated, uh, my biologist has uh, visited the project area uh, five times on request 
from city staff to uh, satisfy neighbors' questions. And um, the initial biological assessment report was done in August of 2016. Uh, the most recent uh, visit by my biologist to the site was done in February of 2021. Mr. Uh, Ryan? Yes, sir. Uh, you've gone over your three minutes, unfortunately. Sure, you bet. Try to keep all the speakers at three minutes, but. Of course. I I'm get sorry. it. You bet. All right, thank you. You bet. All right, do we have any other speakers in favor? Please raise your hand. In favor. Okay. Uh, you two gentlemen can unraise your hands and we'll go into the opposition. Okay. All right, let's start with, well, let's see. Who do we have? We have, Tricia, I have you print. Cheryl, yeah. All right, we're gonna start with uh, Tricia Dielgen. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your, your name. I did receive your email. If you wish to speak, uh, unmute your mic. You have three minutes. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. My, my name is Tricia Delgin. I'm a resources, water resources and habitat restoration professional and also the project leader for the dedicated, not designated open space 32nd Street Canyon. Uh, revitalization, which occurred over years and at tremendous cost. I am speaking today to point out the anomalies in the proposed um, biological report, as well as physical and legal limitations ignored therein. Despite the method that we use to demonstrate the steepness, because this is not our thing, I think you can see how it lines up vis-a-vis -vis the palm tree in the background that it is very steep. And uh, likewise, photographically and glaringly evident in person is the uh, chasm that um, Mr. Ryan is talking about to the north. Um, it's a drainage that is widening. And apart from physically demonstrating the project site hillsides, which is the same, it's erosivity. This same drainage is cavernating under the so-called Bancroft Street, which is also an entirely private driveway, in no way maintained by the city of San Diego. This private driveway constitutes the only access to the project in which the developer has no known legal right that we know of. Our group um, relies, relies on the biological surveys of plant taxonomists John Redman, curator of botany at the San Diego Natural History Museum, as well as other widely regarded uh, biologists. Dr. Redman identified uh, the wart stem Cianothus as an indicator species of the Southern Maritime Chaparral community of only 5% remains at that, on the planet part of this in this canyon. So this is at odds with the biological assessment that the uh, uh, developer provided. I ask you to deny the application for variance um, variances that depend to the, I'm sorry, I'm shaking <laughs> the okay. section um, in question. Um, item A of that section requires special circumstances and the special circumstances are those that actually speak against doing, uh, granting this variance. The erosion and the highly um, uh, fragile circumstances surrounding the site. And B, under the same stoning restrictions, is, requires reasonable use. And there's really nothing reasonable about it in this setting. Uh, C is about the harmony. Is just about up, but I just want to Okay, we've got harmony. I don't see harmony there and applicable land use. Uh, the Golden Hill Planning Community, uh, community Update a plan um, puts great emphasis on canyon aesthetics 
and ecological services and our actions as humans over the last years, as we all know, we know about what we do with our individual decisions and this okay, is individual decision. I didn't interrupt you, but your time is up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Okay, now we have uh, Cheryl Bright Brighton. Sorry if I got that wrong. Hi, my name is Cheryl Briarton, and my my house is to the east and uphill from the canyon. The original house that was on the thirteen hundred block of Bancroft Street on the canyon rim. Uh, the house was built in nineteen forty six, and the map. Uh, that staff showed inaccurately depicts the um, pavement on the Bancroft Street right of way. The only access, as you probably saw when you went there, uh, used to be the uh, pavement to my house, which I purchased in the 1970s. And then in the 1980s, a developer created a very stiff, a steep driveway down into the canyon to build some houses down there. That uh, driveway has been crumbling. And as part of that driveway, there was a retaining wall built and maintained originally by the city I sent you a photo of how that is buckling because of the erosion, the friable soil in the canyon that created that chasm uh, that's at the intersection of the 1300 block of Bancroft and Ash, right where both I and the uh, people who live uh, where applicant wants to build have to access our property. The, I'm very concerned because of the friability and the buckling that my access, my pre-existing access to my house is going to be uh, undermined. And I also am concerned about wildfires in climate change. The, this project is located in the city's very high, high fire hazard severity zone with wildland and urban interface. And according to city fire policy A-001, there's supposed to be a fire turnaround at the bottom to fight the canyon fires. There have been canyon fires in the time I've lived here right down from the project site, in fact. And so the city has not complied with its own fire policy requirements and actually created some damage, I understand, from the Lower Bancroft Street residents to the uh, privately maintained driveway. So at the present time, there's no access that's public on any publicly maintained roadway to this project site. And CEQA, okay, but CEQA, we did not receive a determination, a negative declaration. Okay. All right, that's your time. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. 
All right, I see Laura Mays. Oh. I'm trying to unmute. That's all right. Take your time. Can you hear me? I sure can. Please introduce yourself. Unmute your mic. Un introduce yourself. And you have three minutes. Okay, my name is Laura Mays. I own one of the houses on the steep drive at the bottom of a steep driveway where the project is located. We just the four of us just spent thousands of dollars to patch the crumbling section where this project is, so we could maintain our accessibility and our safety. And I can't imagine. I know it, it would be terrible if they were built the cross traffic. It would cause, but just in building, I don't understand how they could build bring in all the dump trucks and cement mixers they'd need to fill that section of canyon without blocking our access completely. We'd be trapped down here. And, uh, and, and it, it, people have mentioned the friability of the soil, that life down here is a fight with gravity and it's, uh, we're fighting it. And uh, I'm sure this would add to the fragility. And I'll stop there. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's see who's left. I have one other hand. I'm having a hard time reading that. Can you guys identify the name of that? Gina? Gina, do you have your hand raised? I do, can you hear me? I sure can. Perfect. So my name is Gina Vondergood. I live in the last house on Bancroft Street, the steep drive. Um, my concern is the FAR with the approval of 4.5, I'm sorry, 0.45 to 0.7. And how can that be assumed? Because we're in the RS11 zone, that our properties are like the 17 zone, which are outliers beyond the canyon. Um, it says the property line, uh, or it states where the property line is, and it looks like the deck will be going about, what, five, maybe 10 feet into the property line to allow the larger home size. So that is a major concern of mine. Who gives that approval? Um, and when did that happen? And also, of course, um, the steepness of the drive and then the um, plants and animals around the area on the report saying that they were not um, seen or in the area, which is not necessarily true. That is all. All right, thank you. Okay. Let's just go. We have a lot of stuff to cover, so I want to try to address all these issues. All right, there are good points made by um, the owner that I might reference. Uh, there are some legitimate issues that uh, need to be addressed. So we're just gonna go in order, uh, nothing specific by priority. Um, so I'm gonna conclude, close public comment. We're gonna turn to staff and try to address some of these I items. Uh, the private driveway, 
is there a legal access for the proposed projects on the private driveway? Staff, anybody? Mr. Fernandez, if I could have engineering uh, address that question. Okay. Hi, Mr. Fernandez, this is Karen Vera from Engineering. Can you please repeat your question? Uh, it was alluded that, they, that the, the driveway was private and they didn't have a legal access. I just want to confirm that they have access rights to their parcel, legal so, access rights. So Bancroft Street, from my understanding, is a public right-of-way. Uh, I don't believe it's a private driveway. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Uh, I don't want to hop back and forth and just keep opening public comment, but a comment was made that they, uh, some of the neighbors banded together and repaired some portions of the driveway. Um, I would assume, I guess I'm not quite getting it where the private driveway is. I'm going to call back, um, Let's see, here we go. I think Tertia may be on. Huh? Hang on. Yeah, if I could get, I'm gonna open up public comment. I'm probably gonna bounce back and forth since there's so many issues. Uh, Tertia, are you still available? Yes, but the person, uh, most capable of speaking to this, you can hear me, right? Yes, I can. Um, is Laura Mays, okay. or I think Gina too, any of the others. Um, <laughs> okay. or actually right. put down there. Thank you. So I'm here. you guys, uh, who is it, Laura Mays? Yes. So was it you that said you guys bandied together and repaired yeah. the private driveway? Four of us homeowners hired a, a, a paver to repair the top section, the steep section where these, this project is, because we needed to get out and it was really bad. So we fixed it ourselves. But right. that's a city street, not a private driveway. Well, it's a private driveway when you ask the city to repair it. And it's public street when you want a development on it. Okay, for our purposes, this is a public street. So uh, it's unfortunate that you guys have to use your own resources, but. Uh, you just need to uh, pressure your council member and your, your city departments to try to get the maintenance that it deserves. Oh, yeah. We've been right? you know, I'm not gonna get into the issue of you guys uh, repairing it. So just wanna acknowledge that that is a public street. Okay. All right, thank you, Tertia. Or thank you, um, Laura, sorry. Okay. I think I'm just gonna to touch on this right now. Um, well, let's get into it, let's get into it. Let's get the uh, city staff. I'm closing comments again, going back into city staff with questions. Um, I'd like city staff to address the sensitive bio and the steep hillside. One more time. I know it was stated in the report. I think some of the residents are still, um, feeling like there's some sensitive bio out there and we have a steep hillside. Um, there's probably a definition of the steep hillside that we city staff can reference so they can understand the difference between a slope and a hillside. But so Hi, Hi, Mr. Fernandez, this is Phil Itzi from Development Services. I'm the planner uh, on, the, on the project. I can address the steep hillsides. Okay. Steep hillsides are defined in the code as having three criteria. They have to have a grade differential of over 50 feet, 25% grade differential, and they have to be natural. The slope analysis provided demonstrates that the top of the, of the lot, the top portion fronting the street, is not natural disturbed. Well, it's over 25%, but it's not natural. And then the uh, bottom two thirds or, or, or so is natural and has a 25%, but does not meet the grade differential of 50 feet. 
So there were no steep hillsides on site. Uh, in addition, I can address a portion of the uh, bio and then I'll let environmental take the rest. If okay, there's so no just, Hold on one second. So just to clarify that we, the definition of the steep hillside, we need a 50 foot differential. Correct. And we don't have that on this, on this project site. We do not. Okay. All right, continue. So uh, the other part of it is the bio and I'll let uh, uh, environmental address the rest, but if there's no mitigation required, then we uh, and planning would not consider that ESL or environmentally sensitive lands for biology. So if there's no impacts to bio and no impacts in the form of steep hillsides, then planning doesn't consider it uh, environmentally sensitive lands and an SDP or NDP are not required. Okay, thank you. Is there a staff that can comment on the actual uh, <coughs> biological species? I think you mentioned that there was a tier four habitat that didn't quite fit the criteria needed. So this is Jamie Kennedy. I'm senior planner with environmental analysis section. I can speak to a few of the biology topics that were touched upon. Um, the first uh, subject was the wart stem ceanothus. So um, on January 27, 2021, the project biologists did visit the Cabrillo National Monument to reference the wart stem ceanothus that's on display there and did compare that to the ceanothus species that are present on site. The ceanothus species um, were identified as buckbrush and big pod ceanothus, which um, are not uh, considered um, sensitive species that are protected um, and considered ESL. The um, ceanothus that are on site are uh, within the, the, the species that are on site within the area that will be maintained for brush management purposes are not sensitive. They are not indicator species of um, uh, Southern Maritime chaparral and the uh, vegetation communities were determined to be disturbed non-native dominant vegetation and disturbed habitat. These habit impacts to these habitats um, are not considered um, significant and no mitigation is required. Um, staff also received some information about gnat catcher. Um, there's not need, no need to go on a different tangent, Jamie. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Is there staff that can address the um, fire hazard concerns? <laughs> Excuse me. Mr. Fernandez, the um, fire reviewer was not able to come to the hearing, but this project was analyzed for uh, fire safety, and um, they had identified that additional road improvements from their perspective um, would not require um, you know, more of a back out area, uh, as it was brought up earlier, the 150 feet, so a turnaround is not necessary for this particular project. Um, the project itself also, uh, fire did require uh, sprinklers as well as dual glazed tempered windows. Um, and then there also is a brush management um, plan in place for the project, all for fire related. Okay, so they're addressing the fire hazard area and with their requirements. Gotcha, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Just wanted to clarify for staff, um, there was mention of a retaining wall that's failing. I thought you mentioned in your report that the retaining wall is not on the subject property site. Um, is that correct? That is correct. The retaining wall is across uh, from the roadway, so it is not on the side of the project site. Okay.
All right. Uh, perhaps staff could uh, comment on how the project will go through the building phase with the equipment and the limited access. Uh, some of the residents were concerned with being trapped in there, stuck in there uh, from the construction and storage uh, elements of the construction site. Is there traffic control, offsite storage of equipment? How is this all going to be managed where it doesn't uh, keep the remaining neighbors stuck in their houses? Uh Haas Floors Abbey here, Engineering Review. I would like to address that question. Hang on, Haas, sir. Okay. Yes. Can you get on camera so I can see you? Uh, unfortunately, my camera is not currently working. Okay. So is the microphone sufficient enough? It will be sufficient. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, as a part of uh, issuing so any permits, building or right away, the contractor would be required to obtain a traffic control permit. And through that process, the access for the remaining of the property subject to, I mean, on that Bancroft Street would be addressed. Okay. How about the uh, storage of materials and equipment? Okay. Is that being addressed as well? Yes. In the traffic if, control permit? Yes. If the uh, contractor requests any area for storage of temporary storage of the equipment, that would that request would be also reviewed and addressed at the time of uh, traffic control permit issuance. Okay, all right, thank you. You bet. I do have another question, and I'm not sure who can answer this. Um, maybe Miss Lindsay. I was just curious what the neighboring houses are built at. Uh, their square footage, you know, there's like a was there three or four existing houses. I'm just curious what their FAR and their uh, their square footage is. Any idea? Um, there are four uh, residences that are south of here. Uh, my understanding is they're, they range anywhere from 15 to 1700 square feet. Um, you know, some of the owners on the call may be able to clarify, but uh, we do not have the uh, FARs for those homes. Okay. But the building size is consistent with what's being proposed on the two lots. That is correct, yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. I think we've covered any, everything. I can't see anything that, uh, I'm just gonna go through, make some comments. Just for clarification, um, I want to acknowledge that the community group did approve this twice. Um, some of the issues brought up, I just want to clarify in case uh, some of it gets a little technical, but I understand how it looks deep to the layman, uh, but the city has a definition of exactly how we measure steep hillsides. Um, so even though you might have a gradient exceeding 25%, uh, it might be less than that 50 foot differential that Mr. Lindsay uh, spoke of. So for you to be qualified at steep hillsides, you need that steep slope and you need a 50 foot differential. If you don't have that 50 foot differential, um, you're not gonna be uh, sensitive lands as far as steep hillsides is concerned. He also mentioned that some of the portions of that hillside was uh, not natural. So regardless of that, uh, we still don't have the differential. We do not have steep hillsides. What we have there is a steep slope and I get it. And that's uh, part of the reason for the variance. That's why we're here today. Um, it was asked today about who gives the approval. That would be me. I make the decision and that's why we're here today. So I'm, I'm gathering, I'm listening, I'm asking questions so we can uh, figure this out. Um, I know the environment there looks fragile, but they have assessed the vegetation communities. Um, 
We don't have sensitive biological resources there. I mean, you have a subspecies of it. It could be, it might look like it, but that's why we analyze it. And that's why they've gone back several times just to be sure uh, it didn't quite meet the thresholds and a species type to trigger sensitive biological resources. So we don't have steep hill sites and we don't have sensitive biological resources. So we don't have environmentally sensitive lands. So someone mentioned, uh, mentioned that they did not receive a negative determination. Uh, it, that is, you know, there's no further CEQA um, requirement there. Yeah, that's, that's the review of that. Uh, the driveway, again, mentioned that it was private driveway. Turns out it's a public street. Unfortunate that you guys have to invest some of your time in there. That is unfortunate. Um, and perhaps city staff can provide you some names or resources where you can speak directly. I always find it uh, helpful to reach out to your city council member uh, regard, regarding the infrastructure of your area. Um, the retaining wall, not the responsibility of this property owner, not on site. Uh, he's not responsible for anything off site. He's just responsible for what he's proposing on the private property. I get that it impacts that narrow street, but uh, they have a legal right to build just like everybody else who is there. Um, there is no, I checked myself even when I was reviewing this. There is no waterway down in the canyon, even though it might act as drainage. It's not a waterway like a stream or a river. So that is uh, not the case. It'll act as drainage, uh, surface drainage. Um, some, some parts, the, and I did go through that exhibit with all the photos. I found them intriguing, but just, just so you know, a photo is very deceiving. You can't tell where it's taken from and what angle it was. You really have to identify and have some sort of point of reference, uh, just like that, that eroded cavity is 80 feet down. So it's not on his property, nothing that he is responsible for. So let's see. I feel the concerns with the building equipment and you know, storage will be addressed when the time comes in that, in that phase of construction. He's addressing all the fire issues based on the requirements. I don't really... <clears throat> There's really no reason to deny this project. Um, I believe the house size will be consistent with what's out there from the neighboring properties. It is a unique circumstance, and that's why the request for variance, so they don't have to follow the strict interpretation. This is the process. Uh, it gets vetted out. We, we break down the issues, and I feel like the construction of this, this house at point, or these houses at point seven zero will not have an appearance of a, a large dwelling unit, anything bigger than what's already out there. So based on the evidence and the testimony, I can make the findings necessary to approve this project. Pursuant to section 15183 of the California Environmental Quality Act, it was determined that there are no project nor site specific significant effects and no mitigation is required. The project is consistent with the underlying zone and the, the final program environmental impact report for the North Park and the Golden Hill community plan updates. No further environmental documentation, uh, documentation is required. So I can make the findings necessary to approve project 458558, variance 1647238. This is subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. This, this decision is final unless appealed to the planning commission. And this concludes uh, this item in today's docket. Thank you for joining us.